cool. Well, thank you. Thank you all for being here today. I'll be very brief. I'll just uh, give you an overview of uh, what DDN is doing uh, in terms of interesting initiatives uh, with respect to HPC and some of the technology trends that we're investing in that might be of interest to you. Uh, and some of the work and research that you're doing. So, I mean, first and foremost, I think HPC continues to evolve and continues to become broader in terms of the types of applications that uh, are being served and the types of organizations that are using HPC technologies in order to solve their challenges. So it used to be, again, academia, uh, government labs, and Pew Research. Uh, and that, I think, over the last uh, half a decade or so has expanded into a lot Lots of areas in uh, enterprise applications, so from genomics to life science, pharmaceuticals, drug discovery, um, as well as manufacturing, all kinds of simulations. And lately, I think the last several years or so, uh, we've seen a significant growth in the area of uh, AI, machine learning, and um, any application that has to do with real-time analysis and processing of vast amounts of data that are disparate in nature uh, and that are stored in various parts of the globe and can be brought together in order to be analyzed and provide better insight into uh, decision-making, which for organizations translates into more revenue per customer, more revenue per service. So that's kind of the landscape of uh, the types of applications. Uh, in terms of uh, what we're seeing at DDN, we're seeing stability in supercomputing, academia, and the labs, uh, as well as oil and gas, now that uh, I guess the prices are kind of getting normalized. So I think there's a um, it's cyclical in nature, uh, that business. So I think that is uh, coming back. Life science is growing. Uh, financial services, because it's directly connected to money, is an area that continues to have a lot of experiment make experimentation, uh, specifically in uh, non-volatile memory technologies, which are very enabling for that particular segment of the market. Weather and climate, as always, um, smaller and smaller tiles and grids, uh, which require uh, exponential requirements in computing power uh, and performance requirements on the storage side. Uh, and then AI and analytics and web cloud, I think, where we are seeing some very, very significant deployments uh, getting done in mobile applications as well as just globally distributed environments. Sure. Yeah, so what does that mean in terms of uh, technologies and applications of technologies? Really three areas, um, hyperscale with object storage. Uh, we're seeing some massive deployments continuing to take place globally uh, in, in lots of environments and industries. All flash arrays, that is a significant growth sector. We are focusing on uh, the performance aspects of that particular market. So we've developed a series of products and technologies uh, that address the AFA market at scale. And then hyperconverged applications, so bringing together various types of protocols uh, into uh, a hardware-based implementation, which merges again non-volatile memory spinning disk and separates the price performance attributes from the price capacity attributes. I mean, you can, oh, it's working! Look at that! Wow, I'm spoiled. Um, so. Um, Another really interesting thing that's taking place with respect to AI, for instance, is there really is a new paradigm in terms of what HPC looked like uh, and the types of environments that were HPC environment compared to what AI is. So, I mean, if you look at the hardware side of it, uh, AI is really GPU-centric, so taking GPUs and using them as an enabling uh, hardware layer uh, in order to do much, much faster computation uh, is something that we're seeing more and more of. Uh, the paradigm of compute-centric environments, which was HPC for decades, uh, has really shifted into a data-centric requirement for AI, for the enterprise prize for web cloud and all of these use cases. And data-centric means that the environments need to be distributed. Uh, and what uh, we see happening is that it's no longer really about the storage layer, the processor layer, and the network layer. 
It's about uh, pieces of hardware spread out throughout the organization or distributed in the cloud and in the organization that come together in order to serve data requirements. So, so that is a very significant shift, which I think is very important uh, in terms of future technologies. Uh, containers, uh, I mean, containers, I think, uh, initially in the enterprise, uh, the enabling aspect of containers was taking the VMware layer and commoditizing it. Uh, we are seeing more and more HPC and large-scale en environments embracing containers and containerizing applications in order to get much better efficiency out of their workloads. So we're addressing that requirement with our IME, which we will talk about. So the infinite memory engine, um, SSD-enabled, non-volatile memory-enabled uh, software. But there's a lot more uh, that can be done by uh, connecting a containerized layer into an IME layer. And we'll touch a little bit on that. Uh, the languages are different. Uh, the protocols are different. Um, job schedulers in HPC, but a lot of uh, interactive stop and go. Uh, lots of uh, AI software stacks are getting developed, and so versatility uh, in the underlying IT infrastructure becomes extremely important. It's no longer about developing and optimizing to a static set of requirements, uh, but it's really a very fluid set of requirements, and so adaptability uh, becomes increasingly important. A lot more capacity, and whereas in HPC, parallel file systems were sufficient in order to address the requirements of customers. Uh, in AI and machine learning-based environments, you really need to combine a whole bunch of different things. It is NFS, it is object stores, it is parallel file systems, and all of them need to work together. So again, a lot more versatility is required in order to address the requirements of these new markets. So the technologies that DDN is investing in, uh, the persistent non-volatile memory layer with IME, so we have a fairly uh, extensive roadmap that uh, we will be bringing to market over the next three to five years uh, that add lots of capabilities in taking various non-volatile memory technologies and enabling them to be far more efficient as they relate to customer workflows with the IME software layer. Uh, the integration of containers and storage, uh, or I should say the integration of applications being containerized and the underlying storage CPU network infrastructure. Uh, we think that there are huge opportunities for uh, efficiency gains by doing that. Uh, so we are investing in, in that particular uh, application. Storage automation uh, in terms of intelligent tiering, so uh, separating performance from capacity, but also within performance, looking at IOPS and bandwidth as separate sets of requirements. So we're doing some interesting things in that area. Uh, and then elastic data services, so kind of adapting to uh, the workflow requirements that are uh, far more flexible and change far more frequently uh, in these new environments. Um, so that's kind of an example of what Elastic Data Services means. Uh, so an IOPS data layer uh, that is SSD non-volatile memory enabled, uh, which provides the performance attributes, and being able to tie into that efficiently with applications which have uh, widely diverging sets of parameters. Read intensive, write intensive, both uh, small block, large block, small request, large request, being able to accommodate all of that with a tier that is SSD non-volatile memory enabled, especially as the price of SSDs continues to drop. Um, so, I mean, if you project that over the next three to five years, uh, the performance layer and kind of the persistent performance layer will increasingly shift into non-volatile memory technologies, uh, whereas the archival or the low-cost capacity layer will be best served by spinning disk. So it's not as much about uh, customers having to make choices. It's really about providing uh, a set of technologies and tools which can accommodate this shift, which is not going to happen overnight, but for which uh, IT environments need to be prepared uh, and need to have uh, the right architectures. 
Um, in terms of some milestones for DDN, so what we did uh, with respect to IME, because we felt that uh, it is a very different set of technologies and requirements from what we've been doing with SFA uh, and kind of the spinning disk parts of the DDN business, we created uh, a separate business unit, uh, Eric Barton, uh, who was instrumental, I guess, on, on the luster side for, for the longest time, joined us uh, as the GM and kind of the visionary and CTO for that business unit. This is a business unit which is expanding very, very rapidly. We're staffing it uh, in Europe, in the U.S., uh, in Asia Pacific. So it's the fastest growing piece of the, of the DDN business. Uh, Non-volatile memories, kind of a related topic, uh, in 2017 will be a quarter of our revenue. So that's up from uh, less than 5% a couple of years ago. And that's due to two things. One, um, it is uh, customers who are doing large-scale deployments, kind of separating uh, the performance layer from the capacity layer. And two, uh, just an increasing number of use cases where customers really need a uh, very, very efficient, high-performance IOPS layer that is best served by non-volatile memory technologies. Um, we delivered our first 100 petabyte uh, storage system. So again, massive in scale. Uh, we are seeing a lot more of these really large-scale deployments being enabled, not just in traditional HPC environments, but also in kind of web cloud AI, machine learning types of environments, mobile applications, um, just a lot going on at very large scale, utilizing HPC technologies to solve uh, new use cases, which again goes back to the paradigm shift we were talking about with HPC and AI, uh, the differences. I think the commonality between those types of environments is the scale, uh, but everything else is different. And so um, when you think about the technologies that need to come together, I think it's similar building blocks, but the way you connect them together and the versatility that is required to connect them together uh, is vastly different. Uh, and uh, we now have over four exabytes uh, in production. Uh, again, I think that the measurement, which used to be more on the capacity attribute, is now shifting into a performance measurement. And performance not necessarily uh, from a monolithic standpoint, which is what HPC used to be, uh, but from a distributed standpoint. Uh, we now have quite a few customers who have massive performance uh, attributes in their environment, but that performance is spread over thousands of locations, uh, tens of millions of users. So it's a sliver of performance per user, uh, or it's a small amount of performance per location. But then when you multiply it out by the number of users or the number of locations, it becomes massive and it becomes much larger than uh, the large HPC sites. Uh, so IME today, uh, it's a very high-performance layer uh, that addresses kind of read-write environments, shared files, small I.O., globally available. Um, it is significantly better in terms of price performance uh, compared to uh, a spinning disk file system paradigm. Uh, even though SSDs are still much more expensive, if you look at the performance attributes, you can do an IME deployment uh, at you know, a quarter of the cost of a file system traditional implementation. Uh, but then if you look at the application layer, some applications can be accelerated by two to three orders of magnitude. So it's significant performance gains in some workloads. Um, where we're taking it uh, is the basics of it, which is improving the performance density uh, for these types of environments, uh, improving the dollars per performance, uh, having environments where the data is always on, so non-disruptive upgrades, kind of enterprise types of uh, attributes, security, resiliency, robustness of the environment, which are all things that uh, are very important for some of these AI-enabled environments, um, which is very different from HPC. I mean, HPC, it used to be, well, you know, give me the best 
uh, price performance at very large scale. And if I have to restart, well, I restart. And if I lose data every once in a while, well, so be it, uh, because that data uh, is transient in nature. Um, what we're finding in these new environments, AI-based environment, is that resiliency, persistency, reliability uh, are far, far, far more important. And, and so we're doing a lot of work in enhancing and really ruggedizing the environment. Um, and then new I.O. models and uh, new data classes are, um, are coming into play. Uh, so, so again, the IME technology is something that started out with, well, how do we break the performance bottlenecks that file systems have? Uh, and how do we do that using an SSD non-volatile memory paradigm? Um, kind of the file systems were developed and designed for spinning disk uh, uh, media. Uh, and so you need a new paradigm for non-volatile memory. So that's what we did with IME when we started the development five, six years ago. Uh, but we have a roadmap that is, is far more extensive and has a lot more capabilities associated with it than just that. And, and we'll be talking about some of those things. Uh, so that's pretty much it in terms of a broad overview. Again, in terms of investments, you know, we're continuing to expand the performance characteristics of the SFA technology, continuing to add capabilities to SFA. Uh, but again, non-volatile memory, um, the hybrid and elastic environments, and, and the ability to do things at very large scale with a fluid set of requirements, which is what the nature of AI, machine learning, uh, and cloud computing really is, is where we are spending additional R&D resources. So that's it for the overview. Hopefully I stayed on time. Thank you.